Hey, welcome back, everybody. We're going to do a combo video now. We're going to do a video response for both Adam 716 and for Nostalgic About Baseball. Both of the contests are ending soon, I think this evening and tomorrow. So we'll just do them both together. The first one, Adam 716, wanted to know uh, an autograph that means the most to you. Um, so... One of my favorite players of all time, and as everybody knows, I'm a big Pirates fan, but um, really Steve Blass is the Pirates in a way. He was on the 71 World Championship team, and he was no doubt the MVP of the World Series, uh, but for Roberto Clemente, absolutely playing out of his mind for seven straight games, but uh, you know, offensively, de defensively, singles, doubles, home runs, clutch hits. Um, <clears throat> world-class throws from the outfield. You know, he, there's video of him throwing from the warning track to home plate in the air, and then he's twirling and throws to third base in the air. Uh, but if not, Steve Blass would have been the runaway MVP, two complete games. Uh, hands down, he would have won it. And uh, then in 73 came around, and he couldn't find home plate and suffered from what's been now called Steve Blast disease, when he just completely lost it and was unable to pitch any longer. And people commonly remember him for that. But in actuality, from 1968 to 72, somewhere in that range, that, that four to five year range, he was in the top five pitchers in the National League. And you got to remember that included a time when Bob Gibson was there, Steve Carlton, <clears throat> Tom Seaver, and so on. So but he's been there. Uh, you know, Clemente passed away in 73. Willie Stargell was there for a while. He passed away. Dave Parker was traded away. <clears throat> and through it all, the good times, the bad times, the great times, you know, the 20-year losing streak, uh, Steve Blass has been there. He lives in Pittsburgh. He worked as a broadcaster for 40 years after he finished his playing career. Uh, just retired last year. But anyway, I was in school in Pittsburgh, and a good friend of mine got a job as the manager of a jazz club, which was located very close to Three River Stadium. And he just, in passing one day, he used to come over for Monday Night Football at my apartment. <clears throat> and just in passing during the game one time, he said, hey, uh, you know, Steve Blast comes in my, in my restaurant after games. And I said, what? He said, yeah, why? And I said, man, I love Steve Blass. you got to call me next time he comes in. So he said, oh, that's no problem. I'll hook you up with him. He's a real nice guy. Talks to us all the time. And, uh, comes in all the time. I said, okay, great. you got to call me. <clears throat> so, of course, this is before cell phones and everything. So <clears throat> I would come home in the evenings after studying and um, hit my answering machine. And he'd be like, hey, get down here. He's down here. He's waiting for you. And I'd be so dejected when I missed it because it was so late when I got home. But anyway, I finally got the call when I was home, and I drove down to the uh, to the club. And <clears throat> before I left, I grabbed every card I could because I had every card of Steve Blass. And I grabbed a couple 8x10s, and I grabbed uh, a Sports Illustrated magazine. He was on the cover. And I went down to the, to the bar. My buddy was working behind the bar that night. <clears throat> So I laid all the cards out, one by one. And uh, my buddy's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I said, I don't know. I just, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. So I laid them out one by one in chronological order. <clears throat> and I put the photos down, and I put the Sports Illustrated down. And I just kind of sat there. My buddy said, go, go talk to him. Go talk to him. I said, now you bring him over. So <laughs> my buddy called him over there, and <clears throat> Steve Blast walked over, and he was kind of stunned. And uh, <laughs> I, I stammered and stuttered around a little bit and visibly nervous, I'm sure. And Mr. Blass was very accommodating, very acceptable, very empathetic. And we just got to talking. And uh, <clears throat> I think at first he was kind of frightened that I had so many cards of his and memorabilia. But he had a friend there that, that uh, was a big baseball fan as well. And we just got we just talked baseball history and talked baseball trivia for two or three hours. I mean, it was it was a long time. And uh, when he was ready to leave, he said, "Hey, do you want me to autograph any of these?" And I I was so nervous. I just said, "No, no, that's okay." And um, 
He said, well, let me sign the one about the, about the World Series since we've been talking about the World Series so much. And I said, okay. So he, he signed this one. This was the Topps uh, Game 7 World Series. That, of course, Topps put out a picture for each game. Blast through the complete game in Game 7. <clears throat> it was the story of the game. So he signed that one. And then this, this is really the great one. He was on the cover of Sports Illustrated in 72, of course, after the uh, uh, World Series in 71. He was on the cover. He said he has that. Uh, this is the one thing he has framed in his house. But you notice this was the first thing he signed, and the, the pen was uh, a little sketchy, and uh, it took him a while to get going on the S. So that's pretty cool. That's my treasured thing. And then the third thing he signed was the 8x10, uh, which showed him, let's see if you can see that, okay. Uh, I don't know if you guys have seen video of the seventh, the, the last out of the bottom of the ninth inning in Baltimore. Merv Rettmund grounds out and uh, Steve Blast runs over to the first baseman and just jumps in midair and he's like four feet off the ground. And uh, then he jumps into the first baseman's arms. And that kind of video, that picture has been ca captured a lot. He signed that. I have that framed, and uh, it's on my wall. Well, it's in storage unit because we're moving. But uh, that's those are the three things he signed, and th those are very special to me. Uh, but again, it's all, it's all about relationships, and life is about relationships, and that's why it's so meaningful to me. Sure, I could meet him at a card show or at an autograph event where I walk up, uh, say hi, say I really admire you, and walk through the line and get done. But this, you know, we actually sat down for at least two, at least two hours, probably closer to three hours that night, and it was just kind of something that, you know, since I was a little kid, listening to pirate games on the radio, that, uh, you know, I, I couldn't have dreamed in a million years that I would do this, and it was just so natural, and uh, he made it so, so easy to spend time with and everything, but. Anyway, that's why that's so meaningful to me. But thanks to Adam for uh, the chance to discuss this, my most meaningful autograph. Congrats on 100 subs, and here's to 100 more. You'll get them real quick. You do a great job on your channel. Uh, check out his channel if you haven't done so. I'll put a uh, link down below. He does a lot of TTM work, always putting out videos, does a great job. And uh, leave a link. But secondly, we need to respond to Nostalgic About Baseball. He's got 500 subs. And uh, he wants you to show off part of your collection in a way that you haven't done before. So my first thought is, well, I need to drive around in the car and, uh, you know, just like nostalgic about baseball and show the cards as I drive or as I'm sitting in my car. But then I thought, well, I don't want to be nostalgic about car wrecks <laughs> or nostalgic about bodily injury. So I just decided to... Uh, Stay in the friendly confines of my lair and show you cards without actually physically touching them. So without further ado, here's some vintage wax of my favorite player of all time. Not Steve Blass, but pretty close. Roberto Clemente, 68 tops, manager's dream. I'm not touching these cards. <laughs> National League 60, 1960 batting leaders with uh, teammate Dick Grote. There's Clemente, Mays, and Larker from L.A. Never done this before without touching cards. 1967 RBI leaders with three Hall of Famers, Cepeda, Clemente, and Aaron. What? You didn't think he had RBI power? 110. He was one away from the lead. Won the MVP in 66. With Frank Robinson in the American League. Buck Blasters with Smokey Burgess, Dick Stewart, Clemente, and the dog, Bob Skinner. Beautiful 64 tops. Before you get too excited, there is a little crease down here. Maybe seat on the back a little bit better. There's a little crease in the corner. Still in great condition. Still love it. Oh, my favorite set, the 67 tops. Uh, is this 68, I think? 68 Deco Edge. Cool card there. 27 of 33. A lot of Hall of Famers in that set. 
think this is 69 all-star inserts. I had a little game you could play. There's the back of that one. 62 tops. I think there's 15 of these cards. 62 tops. And let's see here. 65. Beautiful card there. Don't like this one as much. This is the 65. What am I talking about? 65 tops. 69 tops. Cool there. 70 tops. This is in pretty good condition as well. Sharp corners on that. A little off centering left to right. Boop, boop, boop. 70 tops. 71 tops. Bought this when I was a kid from Renato Galasso, mail order company. Good centering, good corners on the 71 tops. Hard to find those. And finally, World Series Game 4. There's Clemente. His buddy Blast got on Game 7. Yep, uh, Blast said, yeah, he stole my Cadillac. Because uh, the MVP of the World Series got a Cadillac. Well, that's it. Oh, did I touch that one? I did touch that one. Oh, my goodness. Broke the streak. Oh, well. Hey, nostalgic about baseball, Andy. We'll get you uh, 500 more subscribers right away. I'll put a link down to his channel as well. Check him out. Give me a thumbs up if you like what you see. Thanks, guys, for help letting me uh, enter your contest. You both run great channels. Best of luck in the future. More and more subs for you both. And thanks. We'll see you soon.